Hello everyone and welcome back to Reed's Reptiles with me, your host, Reed. In this episode today, guys, we are going to be looking at cohabitation and whether or not you should cohabitate snakes. So guys, cohabitation. I personally am a fan of cohabitation, but you do have to be aware that certain species are not able to be cohabitated. So for an example, any snake with the word king in its name, you never ever ever cohabitate. Because a king snake, like a king cobra, or just in general, the king snakes, um, are cannibalistic, along with other snakes like Musarana, and there have even been instances where people have found that Burmese pythons can be cannibalistic also. I have heard a few horror stories. Now, um, if a snake has sexual um, dimorphism, which basically means if, for an example, in the Burmese python family or in the green anaconda family, the females usually get two to three times the size of a male. You should never cohabitate snakes that have a significant size difference, even if they're not particularly known to be cannibalistic, simply because um, there is a chance that one day your snake could end up perishing or being eaten by the larger snake. I have heard of people putting in two Burmese pythons together to breed them. They've went to bed, they've woken up in the morning, the male is gone and the female is looking considerably much fatter than what she originally was. Now at the moment I have my two corn snakes, my two adults, Storm and Red, together. As you can see, you can see Storm just here. Her head's actually just out of sight, just down here. It's very hard to get a good head shot in. She's actually in the middle of blue at the moment. Um, corn snakes you can keep together, I would say, and in fact I think they even enjoy um, being together. But as I say, make sure there is no considerable size difference. If you have a jungle corn, which is a corn snake bred with a king snake, do not cohabitate these animals, because there is a chance that the corn snake or the jungle corn, should I say, has taken more DNA from the king snake side than the corn snake side, which would mean that it would possibly eat um, any other snakes that you put in with it. Um, cohabitation is good for species such as garter snakes. Now, in the wild, naturally, a garter snake would actually live in giant groups especially for uh, hibernation and the, then the breeding season. But even then, these snakes are slightly dimorphic as well. As, as a general rule, I'm pretty sure the females are larger than the male. Now, in corn snakes, the males are larger than the females. And this is why I personally think you can get away with it. Another tip when you are cohabitating snakes together is if you're going to have males and females living together, make sure it's one male with maybe two females max. Never put two males in together because they will fight. Another tip as well guys is if you're going to cohabitate snakes do not feed them inside their vivarium because that's how you'll end up with one snake at the head end of a mouse and then the other snake will go for the other end of the mouse and whichever snake gets to the middle first they may end up accidentally start to start to consume the other snake in the process of eating the rat if both of them for the same rat or mouse. Um, I have also seen people who have fed snakes that have been kept together and the snake has accidentally missed the prey and end up, ended up grabbing a hold of the other snake and actually start constricting it. Now you don't want this because this is going to unduly damage and unduly stress the snake that's been attacked as well as the snake that has attacked because you're going to have to pry it off the other snake. Um, so yeah guys, when it comes to cohabitation you can get away with it but you do have to do your research. Now guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for more. This has been Reed's Reptiles. Have a good day and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments.